Guys and gals, it's that wonderful voice from the internet, Officer Dan with GK Tech, and we're back in the Swirl Pot, aka Surge Tank, aka Expansion Tank. Now what you're seeing on your screen is the complete kit for the S Chassis with all the bits and bobs needed to mount everything up. But one thing you may not know is that we carry these for other models as well, those being the Z33 350Z, Z34 370Z, and the beloved 86. Now we're going to run you through what you get, but we'll We'll also add in what's needed and what goes where for the other chassis that we offer so that you can use the learnings from this video across all the broken cars on jack stands in your yard so let's crack into what you get with the kit starting with the swirl pot itself these are the same across all the kits and conveniently have all the ports in the correct positions to suit and can even balance up right on the bottom outlet little dude's got party tricks now that the tank itself is fitted with a blanking cap which is used to cap off your actual radiator which we will cover later on and in some of the kits, you'll also have the option of adding a high pressure radiator cap for the swirl pot itself, which we'll explain in a bit later also. Then you have the lower hose sensor adapter, which splices into your lower hose, obviously, and allows for you to get some coolant flow from there. Next up, you get the fittings, with the first black one being the one that screws into said junction that we previously mentioned, while the second silver fitting is specific to God's motor, the old SR20, and it pulls coolant from the top hose. Now, in the other models, we use different junctions that pull coolant from different locations that we will show some sweet pans of what they look like on the screen. But again, refer to the ASM or our website to know where they go and what you're splicing into. And then you have the chassis specific engine brackets that come with all the hardware needed to bolt said bracket up and are specifically designed and contoured to fit the chassis that you would be ordering for based off of what chassis you already have, obviously. They all fit up in different spots, so peep the ASMs and or website that comes with the kit to know where to put it. And lastly, we have the abundance of cooling hoses that come with each kit so that you can plumb this cooling system up better than Mario and or Luigi ever could, depending on who was your favorite. I'm a toad guy myself. Anywho, let's head on over to the lucky whip that will now be burped and bled properly like any newborn on the planet would. First things first, hop underneath and drain the coolant from the radiator. Now a pro tip is to remove the drain plug with the top radiator cap on. It will dribble out slowly as you can see here and take 14 years to drain but it's controllable. The other side of that pro tip, and please be prepared with buckets and towels, is that if you remove the top radiator, a cap it allows air to flow from up top, which will then allow the fluid to yeet out like last night's Taco Bell except without the burn. Once the workshop floor is a mess and your clothes are all wet and the coolant is all drained, obviously go ahead and throw the drain plug back in and tighten that down. Don't over tighten it, this little guy is fragile. Now let's head up top and you can see the top radiator hose neck on the SR20 that has the lonesome bleeder bolt sticking out. This is what needs to be removed in order to fit the silver fitting we mentioned earlier. So we simply remove that bolt and go ahead and install that silver fitting with the copper washer and tighten that sucker down. Again, we're doing this install on a Nissan S14 chassis, so for other chassis we have featured on the side of this video, you tap into the different spots. So with the Z33 and the Z34, and would splice this into the junction hose you're seeing here, and then the 86 into this hose right here. Now for the bottom hose, it's going to be tricky to get to on any chassis, so if you can do it on the car, great. If you want to save the calisthenics poses and soar back, it might be better to do it off the car, so go ahead and loosen the clamp on the bottom and wiggle that hose off then the top clamp and get that hose out and on the bench. Now that it's on the bench we're going to need to assemble the lower hose sensor and adapter with the fitting we mentioned earlier. Now for best practice it's good to use a thread sealer on the tapered fitting when installing into the adapter so smear that across the threads and go ahead and install that said fitting and tighten her down. Whip your hose out, not that one on the bench and now as you can see the hose has a couple of bends in it not that one which you do not want to put this junction on a bend you want it in the straightest section ever so it clamps and seals properly as well as not interfering with any of the surrounding engine components so be sure to check that before cutting now once you know where is best, go ahead and mark out the hose where you would need to cut it. And the little handy tip is to also mark it vertically as well. So that way you can line the hose up to be in the exact position as it was once it's cut. Cut said hose like you would a block of cheese, making sure you cut straight. 
Once done, slide the clamps on either side and slip your adapter into each side. Line up those super handy vertical lines that you for sure 100% put on there. Now's a good time to double check everything that the outlet is facing where you want it to face with a little test fit. You can either leave them loose if you're unsure and tighten them later, or if you're oh so sure about the pose-ish, you can go ahead and tighten those down on the bench right now. Slide that bottom hose back in and fit it to the top side gigantic nipple and the other one to the bottom side gigantic nipple. We wanted to triple check that our outlet was in the right place, so we decided to tighten the junction on the car as you see here. Awkwardly tighten that top hose clamp and the bottom hose clamp and make sure all the rest are tight and the bottom is done, my dude. Now it's time to assemble the bracket to the swirl pot. Now again, each bracket is designed off the specific chassis we made it for, so make sure you mount them the right way based off of what the ASM says. In this case, once we checked it was the right way, you can simply screw the bolts in and tighten them down. Simple. Now we're going to slide on over to the strut tower, which is where we're going to be placing said swirl pot. Now for the S13, it does have provisions, so you won't need to drill a hole, but for the S14 and 15, it doesn't, so you will. Now for the other models that we offer, we'll quickly show where they go with the Z33 and Z34 chassis being situated at the back of the engine and the 86 also being situated at the back bolted to the firewall. The main thing you want is for the can to be as high as possible. This is being done as air always rises to the top so you want it as high as it can be. So don't mount it any lower than your highest coolant hose. Mount the bracket to where it should be making sure it clears the surrounding modifications and OEM gear whilst also making sure that the outlets are free and clear to be plumbed up and then mark the bracket holes. One thing to make sure of when trying to mount this as high as possible is to make sure the hood clears. That's something often forgotten. Ask me how I know. Anywho, get your favorite pin punched so the drill can locate and then drill to suit each hole. Once drilled, get your catch can on and throw that thing up into its position and temporarily screw the bolts that secure it down. Now that that's in place, we can diligently thread the hose through this wiring and coolant hose jungle that Nissan has blessed us with. Weave that coolant hose through to the bottom hose adapter this hose goes from the bottom radiator hose to the bottom outlet on the swirl pot. Once you've neatly run the hose, keeping it away from anything hot and or spinning, cut the hose where it needs to be cut. In our case, instead of yard sailing 14 tools across the shop with the frustration of getting our arms, a camera, and a light in that Nissan jungle of a mess, we thought it'd be best to remove the can and connect it up on the bench, fit it with the supplied spring clamps to the hose, then fit the hose to the swirl pot and the clamps over the fitting on the pot. Now go back to the whip, slide that thing in from the top, getting the bolts through the strut tower and the nuts on the other side. Now, if you're by yourself, you're going to have to get your biggest bear hug on on the wheel arch, holding the nuts inside with one hand and tightening the bolts on the other side with your other hand. Okay, now that it's secure, head down into the jungle and slide that hose over the top, then the spring clamp also, and don't ask us how we got this shot. It was goddamn near impossible. So now you want to take the blanking cap off the swirl pot because now that cap needs to be put on your radiator. Now the blanking cap doesn't have a spring, it just seals the top of the radiator so coolant doesn't leak from it. But what it does do is allow the coolant to go from the outlet of the radiator that you can see right there to where we're going to plumb up to the swirl pot. That means that the cap that had the spring on it, which was on your radiator, now needs to get fitted to the swirl pot. With either the spring cap that you had, or depending what the kit you get, we give the option of a higher pressure radiator cap, as the higher the pressure, the higher the boiling point the coolant will be, which prevents overheating and coolant loss. Anywho, remove that hose, which did go from the outlet lid on the radiator to the overflow bottle and remove that from the bottle as well. We won't be needing that any longer. Get the supplied hose and connect that up to the overflow bottle. Go ahead and run that to the very top near the cap. Cut the line to suit and this is now the outlet for the overflow bottle. Now get that hose again and connect it to the radiator outlet. Then run that hose to the second highest middle outlet and cut that to length then set it in place. Now lastly get the coolant hose and run it from the upper hose outlet. So in our case the silver fitting and run that to the last port on the swirl pot. But if it were on any other model, it would be from the highest possible engine bleed location. Now we've loosely fit everything up to make sure that the lines are the correct size, but also purely for demonstration and to show you where all the lines needed to be run. So now that you've seen exactly where they go and being that our OCD and cleanliness is killing us, we can fit the lines properly. So make damn well sure you put all the spring clamps on each hose, run them exactly where they need to go and neatly zip tie them so they're safe and not going to rub a hole anywhere. Secure them out of the way of anything spinning or direct heat as you can see our main man DK has done so eloquently now. 
Now what this does mean is that the blinking cap on the radiator is dead to you. You will not need to touch it at all, ever again, as it's simply sealing off the radiator. You now need to go to the swirl pot to top up your coolant and check it from here on. So go ahead and take the time now to fill up that swirl pot with your favorite blend of coolant and then proceed to bleed the old girl. You'll still need to top up and monitor your overflow bottle as you normally would, but that hasn't changed, so make sure to do that as well. Welcome to the Swirl Pot Club. I'm sure you made Mario and or Luigi proud, maybe Toad, provided you plumbed it up correctly and neatly. Princess is still going to be disappointed, however, I'm sorry. Speaking of somebody who needs a plumber, one of these guys has sprung a leak and you're never going to guess who it was. They throw these videos together to show you what we do, how to do it, and how you should be doing it. If you don't know what you're doing, reach out to Nintendo or the world's best plumbers and or us via electronic mail and or professional. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and DK with another knowledge bomb and wonderful product for these beautiful chassis. We'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.